Yes, do you find the word asparagus funny? Not when you say it. Good evening and welcome to Health Scope, the show where we talk to health food chefs from around the country. I am, of course, your host, Sir William Jethro, Tully Fitzpatrick, Noogie Lover, Soybean, Cristo Wheat, and Raisin Beef Sticks, Snot Boy, Higgins, Regina Steamer, Carpet Cleaner, Robinson Caruso, say can you see, by the dawn's early light lunch and a Weight Watcher shake for dinner, and you can lose 2,000 leagues under the sea, under the sea, darling, it's better. Down where it's wetter. Take it from meals on wheels. Keep on turning. Proud Mary gave birth to the baby Jesus and Mary. Chain gangs all here, there, everywhere. Wolf there, Castle and McCormick Dundee. From what's happening now? Well, that's it. I finished my name. Just kidding. Rita Hayworth, 20 cents. You've been gone. With earth, wind, and fire, the cleaning staff, I found a pile of dust under the carpet today. I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. That's the end of my name, I promise. Now here's my guest, Richard Richards. Wow, that was some long name you had there. Well, actually, I'm not done with it yet. You're kidding. Nope. That's impossible. Nah, no, it's not. Well, go ahead, finish your name. I'm doing it. When? Right now? Yes, this conversation is actually part of my name. That's insane. That's correct. How could what I be saying be part of your name? A major coincidence. You do it. Nope. My name can only be said by my voice and your voice. This is ludicrous. I suppose so. So, you're saying that me talking about how crazy your name is is part of your name? Precisely. So is me saying precisely. You see, my name is very, very, very Dutch, and it just so happens that in my name itself, me and you discuss how weird my name is. Even the sentence I just said is part of my name, as well as a sentence explaining that sentence, as well as that sentence, as well as this one. Uh, this is impossible. How can I possibly be saying everything correctly? Whoops, that wasn't part of my name name. You just said the wrong thing there. Really? No, I just had to say that. It's part of my name. Well, I find this very hard to believe. Mm. What, what if I just said something out of the blue, like, uh, elephant? You hear that? Elephant! What about it? Uh, I bet you didn't know I was going to say that. Actually, I did. You were supposed to yell the word elephant twice, and then I was supposed to explain it, which I'm doing now. Actually, you say the word again in a couple of seconds. What word? Elephant? There it is. Oh. Well, uh, when does this name end? After we sing the first two lines to Parents Just Don't Understand by DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Okay, okay here's the situation. situation. My, My parents, parents went, went away for a week's vacation. vacation. Okay, welcome to Fashion Designers, the show where we interview fashion designers from all over the country. I know I said this was a health show, but that was part of my name. Thanks, sir, for helping me out with my name as usual. No problem. For those of you out there who don't know me, my name's not Richard, it's Pat. I just have to say my name is Richard because it's a part of his name. Okay, thanks again. Uh, I'm I was going to bring out a famous designer to interview, but it seems that once again we've run out of time. Well, I'll see you tomorrow on Fashion Designers. Bro Brian's brother? Uh, friend. Brian's friend. Mm -hmm. You sound very young. Um, 14. I'm older than he is. Stop lying. Wait, hold on. How old is Brian? 14, but I'll be in by like a couple months. Oh my God, Brian. Brian's very mature. Brian, talk. <laughs> yeah? How much hair do you have on your peepee? -pee? <laughs> You're really mature. <laughs> now, you say I to the sandbox. Amanda? Yeah? You go up with numbers. I say I won the sandbox. You say I to the sandbox. Ready? I won the sandbox. I two the sandbox. I three the sandbox. I four the sandbox. I five the sandbox. I six the sandbox. I seven the sandbox. I nine the sandbox. That ain't fair. Uh -oh. That totally ain't fair, Amanda. Hey, hey Brian. Yes. I ate the sandbox. Yeah! <laughs> you know? I'm sure we've all tried to pet a dog with that nice calm, ooh, ooh and then start cursing the dog out, saying, I'm gonna beat you. Yes, I am. Yes, I am going to beat you. Um, try instead of petting the dog, uh, stuff a finger in its ass. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, that's great. Well, how about this? Walk around with a typewriter. Just walk around with a typewriter. And instead of talking to people, just type down what you want to say to them and hand them the sheet of paper. Right. I like that idea. You like that idea? I think I'm going to do that. Yeah. I Can think we... instead, of, instead of talking to people... Put a finger in there. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're going to say? You read me like a book. <laughs> My guest tonight is the multi-talented Lemuel Muskmelon. Hello. Now, Lemuel, as I was told, you can perform special anomalous functions with specific body parts. That is correct, yes. Could you please elaborate a bit for our listening audience on what you mean by special anomalous functions? Well, for example, I was born into this world with constantly yodeling testicles. Say again? Constantly yodeling testicles. Here, let me demonstrate. No, 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 that won't be necessary. Oh, come on, this is radio. Well, uh, all right. Zip. Zip. 
Very impressive. Thanks. Now tell me, how do you keep the sound in your trousers? Soundproof panties. I see. And is there anything else your testicles can do? Yes, they also make a mean hamburger wellington. Unfortunately, I don't have the ingredients with me. That's okay, I don't think I can watch them. Now. Yes, they also make a mean hamburger wellington. Unfortunately, I don't have the ingredients with me. That's okay, I don't think I can watch them. Whoa, where the hell did that come from? Uh, that would be me. Come again? Maybe later. No, 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 I mean, clarify yourself. Oh, I'm recording this conversation with my foot. That's ridiculous. Prove it. I just did. Do it again. That's ridiculous. Prove it. I just did. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's great for capturing those special moments in life. Fun at parties, too. Better than karaoke. Do you ever leave memos to yourself? You know, like, get milk? Are you implying that I talk to my foot? I was just asking. Are you implying that I talk to my foot? I was just asking. Yes, that's very nice. How does your wife feel about it? I'm afraid she died at birth. I'm sorry. Not your fault. What about the Muppet Babies? 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 Stop that! How do the Muppet Babies feel about it? I'm afraid I don't understand. Could you please rephrase the question? Sure. Feel Muppet do about how the babies? The Muppet Babies can burn in hellfire for all I care. That still doesn't change the fact that I like to dance in urine. I see. That's a little more than I bargained for on that one, but that's okay. Now... I'm afraid I don't understand. Could you please rephrase the question? Sure. Feel Muppet do about how the babies. Cut that out! Now I mean it. Control your foot. I'm sorry. It must be getting low on batteries. Fine. Last question. Are there any other special functions your body parts can perform before we end the show? Yes. If I clench my butt cheeks up real hard, I can make the sun come out. Yeah! <laughs> one time we took away my grandmother's uh, dentures, like you said, and we put a, a, a squirrel. There well, and she had a squirrel. You know, I just gotta say, it's not, it's, it's really not cool <laughs> to goof on the elderly because they're capable of great violence. Yeah. <laughs> what were you, what were you drinking? I was drinking. Uh... <laughs> I was drinking. That's right. I was drinking. They're back. Damn it. Darren Zoltowski in the swarm. <laughs> uh, hello and welcome to Captain Armadillo's Pet Shop. How can I help you today? Uh, well, I'm looking for a new pet for my daughter. Uh, I'm really just browsing until something catches my fancy, I guess would be the... Well, uh, you just take your time and uh, don't forget these are only the top-rate quality animals in the business. They weren't hijacked from experimental laboratories or anything. Uh, okay, uh, wh where are the dogs? Uh, in the back. Whoa. This puppy only has two front legs. Uh, I hate to break it to you, but they all only have two front legs. If they had more than two front legs, they'd be freaks of nature. No, no, I mean, uh, all he has is two front legs. There, there are no back legs. Oh, 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 that's, uh, that's Fred. He was in an accident about three years back. Wow, what happened? Well, it was, uh, well, uh, you know what, uh, Mountain lion looks like. Well, whoa! What happened to this puppy? W which one? This one here. Oh, that's no skin, Charlie. He has no skin. He used to be a guard dog at a waste dump. He's cool though. Look, he breathes fire. Well, yeah, maybe dogs are not quite what my daughter needs. <laughs> I'm sure she'd like a cat. Maybe. Are your cats missing any limbs? Huh? No, no, just faces. Excuse me. What? What'd you just say? Nothing. You say your cats are missing faces? I don't know what you're talking about. Where are the fish? In the back. Oh, oh, these are very interesting. Hey, these aren't tropical fish. They're spools of thread. No, no, no. These are very ancient Egyptian fish called wallabies. Uh, Bullstein. Uh, and those aren't angelfish over here. These are tinfoil. And this tank is full of jujubes. Oh, those are guppies. I'm out of here, man. Maybe maybe your girl wants something a little less, you know, traditional. Uh, how about a bunny rabbit? That's a slipper. No, no, no. It's a rabbit. They're just very flat. Listen. Hi, I'm a bunny rabbit. Can you take me home? This is ridiculous. Who do you think I am, man? Rabbits can't talk. How about a monkey? I want to see it first. Look, there ain't no missing limbs on this fella. His name's Quackadoodles. He's leaking. No, that's natural. He pees constantly. He pees... Now, why would I want a constantly urinating monkey? Well, uh, he could do really complex chores. He could sit at the dinner table. But he pees all the time. He could drive a stick shift. He doesn't stop peeing. He can play the trombone for three weeks without water. I think you're missing the point here. He, he pees constantly. End of conversation. How about a pet snake? That's a link sausage. Turtle? That's an ashtray with two eyes painted on it. A bird. She'd love a bird. All right, let me see one. This here is an African Zambato bird parrot. It could say its name, land on your shoulder, and if you give it some water, it makes its own gravy. I'm leaving, all right? How about it, sir? Well, let, let me speak to it. Hello? Hello? I'm oh. Satan. Kill the priest. Swallow your soul. Swallow your soul. Well, that was interesting. What do you think? I'll take two of them. All right. Yeah! You haven't been here in a while. Wow. That's good, though. I'm glad you're here. <clears throat> I like your hair. I meant to tell you when I was watching you do the other show, I like your hair. I just uh, I just figure it looks like the, the, the Q-tip. You look like Yahoo Serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Yahoo Syrian. You can't have first and last names that are words. Exactly. You can have like a say like a funny first name or yeah. a funny middle name yeah. or a funny last name, but to have or a funny nickname. But there you, you go. Yeah. You can't have both a first and last name that are like funny. Whoopi you know? Goldberg. If it was, or if it were, if it were Whoopi Ho Hallelujah or Whoopi Hooray <laughs> or Whoopi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, that's only because we fear change. <laughs> How about, how about this right name? Yahoo. Imagine that was his name. Then I think you'd get a little more press. Fred. How was that? How about uh? I think what I'd name my first kid, Brian, is this. Burdick. <laughs> well, I was thinking about this, and this is not. This is actually serious. Christopher after my brother. Christopher James. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael Bolton, about abused children. Child abuse claims the lives of things of being isolated, cut off, feeling hopeless. If you draw the parent and to strike the out a child, said, if you know the parent having difficulty, reach out, sit down and talk. Give that parent a break from the stress. Get help for yourself. Talk to a friend. For more information, write me, Michael Bolton, Box 286. Take time out. Message is sponsored by the National Committee for the Prevention of Child Abuse and the Ad Council. And by WFNT. Scalaro. Oh, well, this is self-explanatory. Hello. 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 Who's there? This is Bob. Oh. Hold on, Bob. I'm talking to you. What's the name again? Tony. Tony. Tony, is Can I, pardon? Can I talk to Tony? Tony. Bob, I want to talk to you. Tony, do you like, do you like, be like the whole animal scene? Do you like, like, animals? The animals? Like the monkey? No. What's your name, ma'am? Ma Keisha. Keisha, do you like animals? Yeah, I like dogs. You like this? <laughs> you like that? So, what's that now? Yeah. I, I like dogs. I mean, I, I don't. <laughs> Tony? Tony? Tony, where yeah. Tony, um, do you, you, think, you think I'm weird? You think I'm weird, don't you? No, I, whatever. Do you think I'm weird? Are you all right, man? Yo, Bob. Yes. You all right? I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm okay. I think you need some help. You think I need help? <laughs> I'm oh, not, my God. Oh, come on. You're not going to like that stuff. Anyway, Tony, you there? I'm here. I love you, Tony. Okay, Tony. Tony, I was I love, I love you, Tony. Tony. what we like to call phone sex. You got chastised by the phone sex lady. Well, I always do. Like she all of a sudden got morals. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? Exactly. You got a problem because you like a furry animal, a nice little furry companion? But don't we all, though? I'm well, sure yeah, there are sure. weirder fetishes out there than the love of animals. I mean, wanting to have sex with an animal is not uncommon, I don't think. Especially in, uh, in uh, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time to get stupid fat with Montel Williams. Uh, hello, and uh, welcome back uh, to the show. I am uh, Montel Williams. Uh, now, we got here in our studio today uh, two people here who got uh, sexual fantasies about uh, people uh, they know. But these people have uh, no clue that their friends have these fantasies about them. First, here's Serio uh, Reduced Iron. I am uh, I'm happy to be here. Are you uh, happy to be here? Yes. Oh, uh, uh, now, Cereal, where do you work? I work in the house of pancakes. Oh, uh, and what is your job uh, there? I'm butter. Now, I understand that uh, uh, you have sexual fantasies about one of the reoccurring customers there. Yes, yeah. Uh, well, she comes in eight times a day and orders a waffle. And then uh, now we, I never see, when I see her, I lose control and I, I pee on the floor. Uh, <laughs> 
She has no clue that you like her. No, no, not 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 at all. Uh, she doesn't even know I exist. I hide behind the coffee and I look at her and pee. Uh, now let's bring her out. Yay! Yay! Uh, what's your name, Miss? Ethel Fatberry. And uh, what is your occupation? Old lady. Uh, this is a serial reduced iron. He works at uh, a restaurant you always go to. He's got something to tell you, Cereal. I, I, I want to get you naked, so all of you is nude, and then I want to put pancakes on you. Put a, a pancake on your forehead, and put a pancake on each one of your armpits, and a pancake in each nostril. Why is he telling me this? Oh, this turns him off. This is really weird. And I want to put pancakes on you. And I want to pancake. Oh, I want to pancake you, basically. It's which the pancake thing, that's done. We've done that. Then I want to have sex with your legs. What? Well, let him finish, Apple. And I, uh, I want to have sex with your arms. Then I, I eat the pancakes. Then we watch John Larroquette show. Then we eat pancakes. Then I have sex with back of your head. What do I do now? Just say thank you. Thank you. Can I go now? Yes. Would you like to say anything serial? I'm happy to be here. Do you feel let down? I feel upset and angry and happy and excited and sad and I'm happy to be here. Well, let's uh, bring out our next guest. Here's Glenn Fall. Good evening. Uh, now, Glenn, why not tell the audience what you do for a living? I'm a serial rapist. Now, I understand that your fantasy includes uh, a next door neighbor? Yes. Let's bring out that neighbor, shall we? Hello, I'm Pete's grandfather. Okay, but what's your name? Pete's grandfather. You seen Pete? Pete who? I miss him. It hurts. Tell him to come home. Uh, oh, this Pete, uh, you haven't seen him in how long? Yes. No. I mean, when was the last time you've seen him? Absolutely. Has it been more than five years? Cheese fries. Excuse me? Milk fed veal. What just happened? Uh, excuse me, Montel? I mean, we're having a conversation. And he just said cheese fries. The man just said cheese fries. Does anybody else see that as uh, a weird? Montel, Montel, uh, this isn't my neighbor. Excuse me? My neighbor. Beautiful. 16-year-old blonde. I've never seen this man before in my life. A man? Is that is that what he calls himself? Uh, now, uh, Mr. Pete's grandfather, is uh, this man your neighbor? No, he is. Hello. I'm Pete's grandfather's neighbor. And uh, what is your name, uh, sir? Pete's grandfather's neighbor. I'm really not enjoying this. I swear to God, if we all don't cooperate right now, that I'm going to come down from this audience and kick all your ass. Now, Glenn, could you do me a favor? Just pretend that this bag of dust is the sexy girl. Well, uh, it, it may sound stupid. Do it. Well, uh, Pete's grandfather? You seen Pete? Uh, no, I, I'd like to tell you that I, I want to break into your house. What the hell did you do that for? Because I want you. Because me? I want you. I'm gravy. Then I'll hold you down, and, and then I'll take off your dress. I eat a loaf of bread every morning. Then I'll take off my pants. I'm stuffed with onions. Uh, I, I can't do this. This is ridiculous. C come on, this guy's so old. I mean, look, his hands fell off. His, his fingers are stapled to the ends of his arms. Look, I could peel his face off. It comes right off. Don't do that. Uh, Glenn, I don't think you should get him angry. I mean his face. It's, it's like a fruit roll-up. Look, how old is this guy? Don't get me angry. You are like me when I'm angry. He only has one ass cheek. <laughs> oh, he's hitting me! Oh, he's hitting me! Can we go to a commercial? Uh, Mar Martel Williams will be right back. <laughs> McDonald's, you order six large chocolate shakes. They take like a half hour getting them all ready. They put them up there. You'd be like, okay, I'll take that one. <laughs> you, know, you know, there's ways you can go into a bakery and throw pigeons at the breadcrumbs. Combine potato salad and chocolate syrup so it looks like crap, and then shove it in your nose. Shove it right in your nose, and then walk walk around town, look for someone you know, shake their hand, and while you're shaking the hand, just sneeze. Like, <laughs> and you watch them slowly think, Did this guy just blow crap out of his nose. <laughs> How about when when you go bowling, you mm -hmm. bowl in somebody else's lane? There you oh, go. Oh, man. Or actually, you a, a devil. A I know, I'm horrible. Or appear at the other end of the alley and throw the ball at the people. <laughs> Okay. I don't want to beat off a dead horse on this one, but excuse me. But let's say, <laughs> let's say you're in an elevator, and just out of nowhere you start beating off a dead horse. <laughs> Suitcases full of bumble bars. Bumble 
fumble balls. You know those little things that go like this? Listen, here comes a bumble ball. It's going to get me. You're, uh, you're not too bright, are you, Ryan? I think Ryan sits a bit too close to the TV screen. Ryan? Yes? Um, I don't really have any jokes here, but I would like to give you some advice. Uh, there are doctors who can help. There are people who, who specialize in this type. This, this, I'm not even joking. I'm serious. Ryan, I'm serious. There's people that can help you out. There's, there's psychoanalysts. There's doctors. Ask you one of your parents. As soon as oh, possible. I need help. Chris wants to beat off a dead horse, and I need help. <laughs> well, that's true. Okay. Yeah, he's got a point. He's there. got a point there. He's, got he's you there. Bro. He's, all right. Okay. Good point. Leave him out of it. At least he's of age. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back to the home shopping show. We uh, have had many interesting items so far this program. It seems that the last dining room silverware set sold like hotcakes. Can you believe it, huh? Isn't that right, Jim? Huh? You bet, Frank. Hot cakes. Okay, uh, the next little item we got for sale here is this gold chain medallion. It was smelted and made in Switzerland about three centuries ago. It has the symbol of fertility on the medallion, and on the back it has a lion. Just call the number at the bottom of the screen for this lovely medallion. Okay, now let's move on to some other interesting items. Here we have a four-foot spiked black dildo. We have only this one in stock. Just call the number. I'll at... take it. Well, it seems we have a caller. Who's this? Uh, I'd rather not say. Well, come on, just say your name. Okay, it's Bob. No, it's not. You're lying. What's your name? Or no dildo. I'm Craig. Last name? Come on. It, it's a shame you won't be getting this dildo. It's grape flavored. Fine, fine. I'm Craig Dithers. Craig Dithers. I, I know you. What? Yeah, you used to sit next to me in math class in high school. Oh, wait till the guys hear this. Wait. Oh, big old Craig Dithers is buying a dildo on national radio. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. It's not for me. It's uh, for my mother. Really? That's even funnier. Craig Dithers is buying a dildo for his mom on national radio. <laughs> I'll tell you what, me and the boys will bring it over to your house tonight, so save us the trouble of mailing it. You still live in that orange and yellow house over on Plaque Hill Avenue? Shh. Stop! Shut up! See, see you later, Craig. Okay, yeah. Uh, Craig's gone. Okay, uh, how about that, Jim? You bet, Frank. Hot cakes. Our next item in the home shopping club is this beautiful, lovely 12-year-old boy dressed in only bike shorts. Just call the number at the bottom of the screen. Wait, I believe we have a call already. Who's this? Yes, I like the item. Sure, uh, you mean the boy? You want the boy? Yes. Say the words. Excuse me? Say you want the boy. I want the boy. Okay, you got him. Wait, this is Craig, right? Uh, I gotta go. <laughs> All right, he's gone. How about that, Jim? Craig Dithers on 98 Plotkill Drive is a pervert. You bet, Frank. Hot cake. Well, let's move on. The next item we have here is actually a candy serving dish. It's made of ivory uh, from the plains of Africa. Hey, this is Craig. I'd like to buy that last item. I'm very normal. Okay, the item is yours, Craig Dithers. Whoops, it looks like I was wrong. It's not a dish. It's penis lengthening cream. What? Congratulations, Craig Dithers, son of William and Francis Dithers of New Paltz, New York, graduate of Highland High School and education major in NYU, New York University. I'm sure everyone from these places will be happy to know that their old pal Craig is now the proud owner of penis lengthening you cream. You tricked me. I don't know what you're talking about. Bye. Okay, Jim? Hot cake. Well, let's move on to the next item here on the Home Shopping Club. It's, uh, hey, wow. I know who would like one of these. It's a whipping bench, complete with leather paddles and cat nine tails. Of course, the bench comes completely stocked with six choir boys tied to the device by their wrists and ankles. We've only got one in stock. I know who wants one. Hot cakes. Well, the number at the bottom of the screen is one, the one they call... Uh, my God, how can you resist? The white little rears, all shiny and hairless, aimed in the sky, waiting to be punished for all their prepubescent thoughts about the little girls in their Latin class? And you're just the man to do it. Oh, I see, I see we have a phone call. Yes, I'd like to purchase the device, please. Really? Uh, well, okay. Are you interested in this sort of thing? Oh, yes. I've been uh, punishing choir boys since I was a Sunday school teacher back in 1970. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Is this Craig? I don't know what you mean by that, dearie. No, wait, wait. No, no, no. This is Craig, right? No. <laughs> no, no, no. This is you. No, it's not me. Just give me the bench. Craig did this. You should be ashamed of yourself. Come on, Frank. Stop it. Man, you are one of the biggest perverts ever, man. <laughs> I guess someone here wants to speak to you. Yeah, who? Craig? Mom? Craig, dear, how are you? Mom, what are you doing there? This nice man sent his co-workers over to my office to pick me up and bring me here to speak to you. I understand you've been buying stuff from them. What did you buy? Nothing, nothing, Ma. A, a candy serving dish. Well, that's so sweet. He's always been a good, wholesome boy. Think so? Don't you dare. You see that, Mrs. Dithers? What, those boys tied down to that thing? That's disgusting. Who is that? Oh, th that's Craig's. 
<gasps> Mike Craig owns that? Yeah, he just, just called and bought it. Not true, Ma, don't listen. Here's the receipt. Jim can vouch. Hot cakes. Craig, it's true. My boy is a pirate. This is disgusting. I want you out of the house. My baby, my baby. No, no, no. Oh, my God, your mom just shot herself. No, no. Craig, Craig. Oh, my God, I think he did it, too. They're all dead. Well, that's sex, huh? The next item on the list is to be sold uh, is the sound of an owl in the wind while eating hotcakes. Hotcakes! <laughs> I always wanted to become a maternity ward doctor. I help women deliver babies. When the woman's given birth, the baby comes out. I don't let her see the baby yet. I hide under the table and I hold up a watermelon. And I just go, oh my god, you gave birth to a freak! And then when she's like, oh, when she starts crying, I start to eat the watermelon. Like, right <laughs> and then she, and she's like, what? And I'm like, no, I'm just kidding. Here's your baby. And I'll just give it the baby. Um, my mother, and this is a true story about a, a norm or a more that was broken, by the way. My mother had to give urine to... For, is it, that's not funny. I'm sorry. My mother had to give urine... Uh, had to submit urine. <laughs> Have I said urine? <laughs> She had to submit urine to the doctor's <laughs> office to get some tests run on it. Now, for some reason, they needed like a, a half gallon of the woman's <laughs> urine. And she had to keep it cold for a certain amount of days. No. So, so yes, she put, she put the urine in a jar and put it in the refrigerator. Oh, Lord, I had people fall. came over the house. No. Can I get a beverage? Yeah, go, go help yourself. <laughs> Open their refrigerator. What's this, apple juice? <laughs> no, that's my mom's yarn. <laughs> but I, I tell you one thing I'm going to do is when I go back, uh, I'm getting an apartment. I'm sorry. I'm getting another apartment. I'm going to get an apartment. I'm going to make it the most normal apartment ever, you know, with little flowered curtains and, you know, a nice clean spotless. But I'm going to have a room. I'm going to have room for, like, when the parents come over and the folks and the uncles and aunts and stuff. And he's going to open it up. There's going to be, like, fire and, like, dildos <laughs> and, like, blood and chickens and pagan goddesses. No, and I'm going to say, change my religion, Ma! <laughs> 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 well, sit down and relax. It's time to watch and call in your favorite dishes on The Phone Cook with your gourmet chef, Bobo Kierkegaard Squeezebox Luigi. Hello and uh, welcome to Phone Cook. I am, of course, Bobo Kierkegaard Squeezebox Luigi. Now, for those of you uh, out there who are not familiar with our little uh, show here, let's uh, tell you all about it. Uh, now, we uh, we take a phone caller. From anyone of you out there who in TV land who uh, you know want to tell us uh, what you want me to cook for you, then we deliver the meal to your door as part of a promotional gig for us here at Phone Cook. <laughs> well, here's a number, 555-3090. Now, here's the first call. Okay, hello, you're on the air, Bobo Kierkegaard, Squeezebox Luigi. Yo, give me a sandwich. Sandwich? Oh, okay, well, that's uh, a little unusual for a gourmet show, but I've never turned away a growled in stomach before. <laughs> so what kind of sandwich are you looking for? How about a nice uh, open turkey and giblet sandwich? No, I want a sandwich. Well, well, yeah, we've gotten that, partner, uh, but uh, what do you want on the sandwich? Me. What do you want in the sandwich? Put the usual. Well, uh, what's that? The cold cuts. Oh, yeah, okay, uh, what kind, partner? The usual cold cuts. Oh, this, is like a, this is like a Twilight Zone episode here. That would be nice. What would? A Twilight Zone episode. Excuse me? Put a Twilight Zone episode on my sandwich, and can you put some nuts on it? Uh, I don't understand. Put some acorns on my sandwich, then put some on my couch, and then put some acorns in my hair. Wait a second. A nice big sandwich with two pieces of bread and a nice summer day in between. You see, that's not possible. I can't do that. Next thing you know, you'll be ordering something to drink, something like New Guinea. No, no, that's not funny enough. I want to drink uh, January 22nd. Hey, that is funny. I know. Well, uh, you know, son, all these things that you want me to make, uh, that's, that's, you know, uh, I don't know how to do it, so I can't really teach you all how to how to make it, and that's the purpose of the show, you know? I know how to cook. Okay, well, uh, well then you teach me how to make all these partner sandwiches, and uh, you can talk me through it, all right? Okay. First, you need bread. Plain white bread. Yeah, but you, you must only use white bread that is evil and deserves to die. Oh, well, how's this piece? Charlie, he never did nothing to nobody. Oh, how's this piece? Ah, Franklin, he's been naughty. Let me check my list twice to make sure. Yep, naughty bread. Okay, well, we have uh, Franklin, the evil white bread, and uh, what goes inside the sandwich? Uh, love. Okay, now how do I do that, huh? Tell the bread you love it. Oh, okay, love you. Like you mean it. Sorry. I, I love you, bread. I, I really do. 
Okay, now we have some love in the sandwich. Now go and get me an old man who has never ever said the word asparagus before. Oh, well, how's this guy? Hello? Well, sir, uh, have you ever said that word before? What, asparagus? No, not ever. Take him away, he's rotten. All right, how about this guy? Have you ever said the word before? What word? Asparagus. No, I don't believe I ever did. Okay, put him in the love sandwich. Uh, what the hell? Get this bread off my head. Who's this? Franklin. Uh, is that it? Yep, now you have a sandwich. Get it over here. All right, where do you live? Uh, it's 777 Is that your address? I'm not done yet. Oh, sorry. 777-7777777. Well, that's all the time we have today for Phone Cook. Tune in tomorrow with Kierkegaard Squeezebox Luigi. <laughs> this has been the end of that damn show, and we could have ended on a better note, huh? What the hell was that? How about B flat? So I wish I was in Fat Boy Land. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I wish I was in Fat Boy Land. I wish I was a Dixie Cup and a Dixie Cup and a Dixie Cup. I wish I was a Dixie and a Dixie Cup. You son of a bitch! Get down! Get him down! Oh, oh, hey. Get him a raisin! Oh, Somebody right. help! Yeah, I got, I got to go. <laughs> go. Darren, end the show, man. Good night. Who are we going to eat, Darren? This is a fat for peas.